If you found a piece of this in England, you'd celebrate. It's called Beaker Pottery, and it's about 4,000 years old. And the people who made it, the Beaker folk, are a huge mystery. But here, an American archaeologist reckons he's found a whole Beaker settlement. He doesn't know how long the Beaker folk lived here, or how big the settlement was. But if we can help to prove that it was part of a sophisticated, organised community, then this area could turn out to be one of the most significant archaeological sites in the whole of Europe. Our archaeologist has worked here for 30 years. We've got just three days. We've come to Dea, high in the mountains on the northwest coast of Mallorca, in search of Copper Age buildings where the Beaker folk lived. The area is a third site. A third site co-director Pep Ensignat is showing Carenza an area called the Maze, our first site. It's hard to believe this rubble-strewn scrubland hides any clues to the mysterious Beaker folk, but Pep thinks he's found evidence of a building under this pile of stones or clapair. Here we have an alignment that would be one wall of a building. Oh, I see, just this, this line of stones sticking one, up through two, the grass three, here. Four, yes. Five, six, and go right into, into the clapel. And on the opposite side, we have another, another alignment that goes right inside, again, the clapel. Right, well, of, of theoretically, the it sounds wonderfully easy, doesn't it? We just take the stones off, take the scrub off, and there's our building. Mm -hmm. But there's at least four tons of rubble to shift here, and our diggers are all local archaeology students who don't speak any English, and seem to be going about the task rather delicately. They'll need to speed up a bit, because as Mick and I discovered from site director Bill Waldron, we've got lots to do this weekend. What have you got here? Well, we've got an excellent uh, aerial photograph showing the uh, the three sites that we're interested in. This is the uh, Santa Lesa Copper Age settlement, which is this, this site is where here. We are now, right? yeah. That's where we are yeah. now. On this uh, place here, we have a ritual area, which is the San Mas uh, sanctuary site. Yeah. And then we have this mystery site in the middle here, which is uh, uh, we call the maze site. Right. And that's where I think most of our uh, efforts should be concentrated. We will be looking at the other two sites, the Beaker settlement at Sonalesa and the sanctuary at Son Mas, in due course. But Carenza's site, the maze, is the key. Because if what's under the clapair there is a Beaker building, then Bill will know the whole area was once home to a rare Beaker community. We do know there, there, are, there is a connection between this site and this site, and that's the Beaker uh, yeah. bit. Now, uh, it would be marvellous if we'd find the beaker bit here, too. Right. So, essentially, yeah. we want to see whether there is a link between, between all these three sites. sites. Right, exactly. How the heck do we do that over a weekend? Well, you've got the expertise. You've got the yeah. things that I don't have. Some of that expertise has just arrived at the maze. The geophysics team are going to test the area around the clapair to yeah. see how far yeah, the building there. extends. Though there's hardly any topsoil, and they might have trouble telling buildings from bedrock. And nearby, Bernard and Stuart are setting up the Global Positioning System, or GPS, which uses satellites to give exact grid references for geographical features and finds. Or it will, if Bernard can master the kit. By the end of the weekend, all the geophysics and GPS data will have been plotted onto an incredibly detailed three-dimensional map, showing the precise location of trenches, geophysics results and finds. And then there's my favourite piece of technology. One of the aspects of time team that the archaeologists find most useful is when we get those big aerial shots so they can see how their site fits into the geography of the area. But as you can see, 
The only helicopter that we've been able to find in Majorca is that little thing, and there's not room for two people plus the pilot. So I can't go up in it, and I'm pretty hacked off about that. And Carenza can't go up in it, and her absence speaks volumes. And the only person who's allowed up, says our chief archaeologist Mick, is our chief archaeologist Mick. And he's going to tell us what he can see. I'll stay here, and Carenza's over there somewhere. Are you ready to go, Mick? Yes, I am. Okay, good luck, have a good flight. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, very clearly. It's working. Mick heads straight for the maze. You can just see the clapper in the corner down here. But it's just one feature in what could be a huge site, and we won't have time to investigate it all. So Mick's looking to see if there are any natural boundaries which might limit our search. But first, he's got to find Carenza. Carenza, are you there? Down below in the maze. I can't see you at the moment. Can you see me? I'm right below you here. Great, this late 20th century well, communication, isn't it? What we're trying it? to do is establish an edge to the site here. There's a whole line of sort of rock outcrop that I'm standing on. It's curving around along here. Yeah, if you keep going in that direction, uh, yeah, bear a bit to your right. A bit further over, uh, heading towards that building. Now, you're not coming up to sort of stones in a row there. You're just coming behind the trees. Hang on. Mick agrees that the rock outcrop looks like a natural boundary, with the site on this side of it. Mick, when you finish drooling over it all, can you get down? All right, OK. I'll send you a bit of photography first. I'll see you shortly. Over and out. He wants to take some photos, so he says over and out. He wants to take some photos, so he says over and out. Come down now! Let's turn it on. While Mick's mucking around in the helicopter, Carenza's returned to the Clapeyre to find problems mounting. The first set of geophysics results were ruined by the bedrock sticking through the topsoil, so they're having to try again. And three hours of stone shifting has made virtually no impression on the Clapeyre. Pep, your archaeologists have been at this for a while now, trying to get the stones off this Clapeyre. We're not really making very much progress on it. Is there any way we can speed things up a bit? Well, the club here is actually a bit large. Uh, what we could do is to just take one quarter or, or a section of the club here off, uh, right next to, to the structures or the alignments of stones, and see if the structures go well inside. If we ever get down to it, the building underneath the rubble may turn out to be something like our second site, the Beaker settlement at Sonalesa. Here, in a compound the size of a football pitch, Bill's found houses, artefacts and more beaker pottery than we have in the whole of the UK. So would this have been a wall? Yes, yeah, you can see that there's the facing, two facing sides are very large stones, uh, which are about three and a half metres wide. So it would uh, have been tall? Oh yes, that thing would have gone up at least three and a half metres. Wow. which is roughly about 8 to 10 feet. This is quite a sophisticated people. Yes, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of uh, manpower has been put into this. What's this little thing? This is a little alcove. It's a, it's a, we call it the guard's niche. For the soldier to word. do that? Not a soldier, no, no. We know that there was a, a, probably a guard dog because we have gnawed bones that we've, we've excavated from in between the crevices of the rocks, and that's one of the, one, one of the indications that they probably had a dog there. There's a whole water system, hydraulic water system, that moved in here that literally brought water right into the houses, back of the houses. It's hard to believe, isn't it, that people who apparently just came out of the Stone Age would have these great big high walls and well, water systems. Well, not, a, not, if you, not if it took 1,100 years, 1,200 years to do it. Look what we've done in the last 1,100, 1,200 years. Yeah. But Bill's not finished with this site. He wants to find out when the beakers first came here. We know they lived during the Copper Age, between about 2500 and 1300 BC. 
But Bill thinks this settlement dates from the very end of that period. So he wants us to dig under a wall here to find out if there are any remains of earlier beaker huts underneath. These could very well be a feature here. If what? it is, that's... What, the, these yeah, lines? Yeah, lines these, these stones, stone lines, yeah. you see this? It could be a feature uh, in here. And then, of course, you could go right on out through there. And yeah, that's on here. There, right. Yeah. Right. And so right out to the wall, the t these two boulders are on here. So, so, so that, if we took a, a one-metre trench right through the middle. all the way through, it would be really something yeah. that's, that, that's that'd really uh, fit practical. in your plans, then, would yeah, it? Yeah, fine. It's show me yeah. what's there ahead of time. Yeah. Can we get yeah, diggers fine, See if we can get some diggers on to go. Hello, Phil, the Karens are over. Hello, Phil. Yeah, over. Oh, sorry, we're about to start digging here. Could you send some diggers over for us, please? Phil, we're, we're, we've not really got anyone to spare over here. I mean, we've, we're trying to move several tonnes of rock here, and it's, it's taken quite a while in the tent. Can you not manage with the number you've got over there? Over. Well, I mean... Come on, fair is fair. I mean, you can't have a monopoly on all the diggers, surely. How many have you got there at the moment? Well, not very many. One and a half. All, all professionals. <laughs> How long's a think take? <laughs> they need well, a couple over the other we side. We can send two. We can spare there. two. Yes. All right, Phil, we can send you over two. Is that is that any help? Over. Yeah, that'll do fine. That'll do fine. You can send them on over. Yeah, that's great. Right. Could they go over to the other side then? Okay. In fact, it wasn't until after lunch that the reinforcements arrived at Sonalesa. Ah, diggers, diggers, fuck right, take my time. <laughs> Go on this way! Come on! Though I think Bill was expecting more muscle and less glamour. Is this it? This is it. Let's get on with it. All right. Bill's decided to divide the trench into a series of one-metre units. We're not allowed to call them holes. Phil's unit progresses noticeably faster than any of the others. But with most of the finds likely to be deep in the crevices in the bedrock, it'll take a while before he gets anything out. Back in the incident room, Steve and Bernard are hard at work on the 3D map. What, what will it do? The idea of having a, the, the landscape we're working in modelled in the computer is that we can plot the, the uh, work that we do during the weekend onto it and we can view it from any angle, we can animate it and we can change the, the, the lighting and so on, so it's, it's much easier for us to, to deal with it. Is it really going to be useful to you, Bernard, or is it just a sort of rather trendy piece of presentation? No, I think it is useful. It's certainly, there are aspects of this site that are due to, with alignment of one site on the other, and uh, this will enable us to study that and view it quite accurately. And how long is it going to take you to create the whole thing? Well, from now we've got the landmass, all we're doing is waiting for the GPS and geophysics results and hopefully they're going to plot in within an hour or two of coming in and we'll be out sitting on the landmass and let's fly around them then. So you can convince me at the, at the end of the weekend when right. it's all up and running and okay. it doesn't just look like something on the paper. Right? <laughs> OK, we'll try our best. See you later. OK. Four o'clock at the maze and they're still not digging. The latest estimate is tomorrow morning for the start of the excavation. And there'll be no guidance from geophysics on where to dig. The bedrock has beaten them. It's probably better without glasses. It is better, actually. Once I defocus, this is a kraken site. I, I, yeah. It's all there. In fact, it's I can see everything, yeah. <laughs> what more can you say? Yeah? <laughs> it's going a bit better at Sonalesa. Bill's found a few more diggers, and Phil's just found our first fragment of beaker pottery. We should be grateful for small mercies. In this case, very small. That's nice. Very, 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 de very yeah, delicate. That something about like that. Very, very delicate. Very thin walled. The only thing's missing here is the is the incisions on it. So I mean, is that like a like virtually a plain beaker? It is plain beaker is what you would what, what I would call it. Yeah. When archaeologists talk of beaker pottery, they mean something like this. It was pottery for special occasions and is recognisable by its distinctive bell shape and carved pattern. Phil's pot would have looked like this, but without the pattern, hence plain beaker. End of day one. This is the first time I've been to this part of the site and all the diggers have gone home. And I'd assumed that this entire clap air would have disappeared by now, but the only bit that's gone is this little bit here. What's gone wrong? <laughs> you try moving it, Tony, there's a lot of it. We, we actually changed our strategy. We decided that as the 
the structure or what's our possible structure runs under this end of the clapper, it made sense just to work to remove this end of it. Um, and that will enable us to see, get down to the structure, see if we can get any dating material off. It seems silly to move the whole lot of it, which is a huge amount of work, when the information we need is where this structure runs in at this end. Mm. And we've been having a discussion about uh, a different strategy for the rest of the site to try yeah. and define what activity there might be here on this big You're ridge. You're twitching, what's well, going on? Having been up in the helicopter and seen the position of this on this promontory, uh, you know, a good good place to live, really, and Bill's found pottery from here. We've been talking about how best to try and define the extent of the site. That, that's our problem, really. We know there's, there's a structure here and there are a few others, possibly. What we don't know is how far it goes. Nothing's been mapped yet. We don't know how far, how big this site might be. So I, I've suggested something that'll upset you tremendously, that we ought to dig some test pits across the areas over the back here. Little arbitrary holes in the one vague me, hope that we might One metre square hole. I, I'm a bit worried about this because I think it's very likely we'll miss it. I think we should do more in the way of sort of field walking to see if there's a difference in the distribution of pottery, whether it falls off beyond yeah, that but sort we're not, of boundary. We're not in this sort of stuff, you've got so much sort of stuff on the surface, yeah, you're you going to have to have a real expert to even see the stuff in there. And, Whatever the outcome of this exchange, it means extra work at the maze tomorrow. And we've still not started digging under the clapair yet. Are we being too ambitious? Join us after the break. Margarita. There. One here, there. Okay. The change of plan at the maze means Carenza's about to run out of diggers. She and Mick couldn't agree whether field walking or test pits would be the best way to get an overview of the site and have decided to do both. So they're going to sink a line of test pits running up the site from the Clapair. And while Carenza's busy organising that, the rest of her team are clearing undergrowth and looking for surface finds. But resources are stretched. The normal, normal people? In fact, there are only two left to start the Clapair Trench. It's not enough, so Mick's gone to Son Alessa to persuade Phil and Bill to give up the hunt for the hut bases and send their diggers to the maze. We've got to keep going with it. And you said to me yesterday, yeah. you said we've got a load of pottery, we've which is the earth pottery, pottery, and you said to me quite clearly yeah. that given another day, we'd have so much pottery from here that, you know, we'd have just an yeah. amazing collection. Well, we would. We, we we've would. got to leave another people day. here. We can keep going. We would have another but, day. But, that's but, a, that, but, that I want. I want you right, to leave but, somebody but, but here. But if, yeah, if, we, if we can leave you at the end of these three days with the potential of a new site... Right, because right, we've right. we've done all this yeah, previous right. uh, work that we've put into it. Right. That's actually more useful than us digging for you and with you, isn't it? Because you can oh, do yes. that. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. That's not a question of that. It's a question of establishing that. Yeah, yeah. That. But and, it seems and like at the up. moment you won't let go of this site. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, we're, not, we're, not, we're not suggesting no, that. No, contrary. No, what no, we're suggesting no. is not no, no. putting a great no, no. deal of work into this because I, Bill I can do it like yeah, I want to see, I wanna it. see <laughs> the three. What is this great I want to see work? you guys establish the three things that you set out to do. Okay, which let's was, do that. Which was to, to, to basically to establish what's going on at this site right here, at these levels, in this particular area okay. of the site. We know what's going on in the other parts of the area, but we want yeah. to know what's in this area. But in order to do that, where are we going to deploy our resources? Well, you can, you can leave a skeleton crew here. You yeah. can, there's no yeah. skeleton yeah. problem. We're yeah. agreed with that. Yeah. I, I'm not against that leaving a skeleton crew and here and continue here. I don't see dropping it. I don't want to see yeah. it dropped and pull everybody off. No, what we're really asking what we, is can we use the maximum we can gather right. to put into the maze site to try and sort this out right. for Bill okay. when we're finished? Are right. you happy with that? Yes, yeah. I'm perfectly happy. That's all right. <laughs> well, let's get well, let's with do it, it then. Well, okay. get right. With that, the search for the hut bases is abandoned. Just two of these diggers will remain here to tidy up the trench. The rest are off to the maze. With the test pits and field walking well underway at the maze, the new diggers are put to work on the Clapair trench. They're excavating the whole cleared area at the end and the alignment of stones is looking promisingly wall-like, but the finds are almost all Roman. Not a good sign for this being a beaker building. Yeah. 
Meanwhile, Phil's tempering his disappointment at stopping the Sonalesa dig with a gentle boat trip. He and Pep are looking for a crucial ingredient of Copper Age life. I think the copper was a very important part of the settlement, having a copper source nearby. It must have been an amazing discovery to find they oh, had yeah. actual Ab ore there absolutely. and then they could actually use it. Absolutely. They're heading for a cove here, right underneath our three sites, to look for the copper seam Pep believes the local beakers would have mined. So we're going to be able to land right on the beach? We're going to land right uh, in front of, of the, where the, the sources are. Uh, the only problem is that you, you may get a little wet. I thought there'd be a catch in it somewhere. Uh, yeah. I think you better start taking your boots off. Better at it. <laughs> They're not just here for the view. Phil's going to try and smelt copper from the ore, so he and Pep have got some mining to do. Oh! oh. Yeah. Now, where is this copper then? Oh, what? Look at that! Go on, keep going. Let's have some of that. It really is green. I mean, I don't know why I colour I expected it to be, but it really is copper. I'm beginning to think they probably did walk down the cliff and didn't come in by boat, because it's far too uncomfortable for your feet. Look out, here comes trouble. <laughs> Hi, Bill. I haven't seen you up here yet. It's nearly lunchtime, and Bill's come to see what the diggers he lost this morning have been up to. Well, this is a trench we're putting on the alignment over right. by the clap hair. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's going on well, but we're still yeah. quite high above yeah. it. It's only classical stuff yeah, at the moment. Right. But we sort of expanded out a bit. We've done some field walking, sort of right, surface right. collection here, looking for prehistoric right, pottery. Right. You can see the sort of red pegs where... Right. Bits have turned up. Bernard's just right. measuring them with his GPS, so yeah, they go right. straight onto the computer. So that'll all go onto, onto right, a plan. Right, we'll get a distribution right. map of the whole site with all the right. prehistoric pottery. What we're also doing is putting in some test pits it's, in a sort of right. line. Come down yeah. here, because we've got a yeah, whole line okay. of them across the site. Um, one up there, we've got about ten in a line right, right, right down yeah. to that yeah. big line of boulders there, which yeah. we're thinking yeah. might mark a natural limit to the area, the area. you'd occupy right. up here. Maybe the test pits will take a while to produce results. In the meantime, Karenz is anxious for a verdict on the field walking find. Boy, that's familiar to us, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's, what do you that's think it, of man. that from a date point of view? Uh, to me, that's Copper Age, and the date age would be somewhere at 1300 and 2500. Right, so that's exactly right, the period exactly. we're interested in. Incidentally, this stuff always accompanies beakerware. Really? Yes, really? this type of pottery, this particular form, this tronconconic form, uh, always is found with beakerware. So the beakers were definitely here at the maze. We've just got to find what it was they lived in. Single building or whole settlement? And is this wall anything to do with them, or was it built later? But what I don't understand is why, in a tiny little backwater like this, was an ancient people building such big walls and big settlement and a big sanctuary? What makes you think that this is a place that's been off of the, off of the beaten track? It was a little island. Islands, that, that doesn't mean a thing. Islands, islands are, are, if they're the right kind of islands, they're very closely related to the mainland. So they would have, this would and have been Especially these place? islands, especially these islands. These islands form actually a set of stop, stepping stones between here and the mainland. If you look at a map, you'll see that there's, there's uh, Menorca, Mallorca, Ibiza, and then the, then the Spanish mainland. And you never get out of sight of land. And this beaker pottery we find here is exactly like the beaker pottery that you find anywhere in the mainland, like anything that you find in the south of France, and what you find in England. In fact, uh, th these things that you've been looking at here, part of them, the oldest part of it, is, is contemporary with Stonehenge and Averbury in England. All right, so at the same time as this was going on here, right. similar people with similar customs were making... Stonehenge and the Avery Exactly, rooms. exactly, exactly contemporary. In fact, Mick is even now getting his first glimpse of the local equivalent of Avebury. Our third site, the sanctuary at Son Mass. It lies one kilometre down the coast from the Sonalesa settlement, with the maze in between the two. 
The building you can see is Iron Age. But Bill's also found beaker pottery here, which suggests that there was an earlier Copper Age sanctuary. If we can find it or prove it existed, we'll know it was part of the same beaker community as the Sonalesa settlement. But first on the case, a geophysics. Where have we got to go? The far side. Oh, it's oh, it's almost a lawn. <laughs> it's got soil on it. That's actually quite moist, right? We, we might hit in bedrock, though. No, I? no, no. I think we might actually get away with, with taking some resistance uh, measurements on here. Um, but if there was a beaker sanctuary on this site, it must have been built here for a reason. So while John and Chris get to work with the geophysics, astroarchaeologist Michael Hoskin is trying to work out if this site aligns with important stars the beakers might have worshipped. Not surprisingly, this has attracted the sceptical interest of Mick and Phil. This very unusual stone here yeah. appears to be hollowed out and looking right up the valley. So, taking this as a clue, yeah. I look at the gap in the hill. Yeah. And um, then I have a catalogue of star positions right. in prehistoric times, and that will enable me to establish what interesting objects right. there were in the sky at the time. And this what, is what because I, it alters yes. year by year. It then. alters because the Earth is not a perfect sphere. It's flattened at the poles. Right. And so the gravitational pull of the Moon and the Sun causes the axis of the Earth to wobble. Right. And from here, um, we have to imagine the, uh, the Earth tilting away. Yeah. And what it appears is that the sky, the stars, are going down. Right. So you're going to take all your calculations and... and uh, see which stars and whatever were visible through that in line with that mountain you'll be able to tell us that tomorrow i will indeed we better leave yeah. you to it <laughs> okay thank <laughs> you very much i just hope it's hail bop or alpha centauri or something I'll, like I'll that i'll do my best <laughs> okay thanks michael bye, -bye. bye, -bye. a few hundred yards away stuart's looking for spiritual guidance too he's found a path running along the cliff edge from the maze settlement to the sanctuary it's the most direct route from one to the other you come up over here, you're actually right on the edge of the cliffs oh, yes, and the sea. Yes, yes. Can you see over there? Yeah. Well, we know there's a connection. Uh, early burials along cliffs, sanctified sites there, and we're, we're looking towards a sanctified site over, over yonder. And you, as you come along this path here, you see how you come down here? Oh, this is a definitely channel. cut out, isn't it? It yeah. is, yeah. This is human, yeah. And as you come down, there's what appears to be a set of steps. Definitely they may be foot warm, but they're artificial, aren't yeah. they? And if you come here, you can see behind you, there's a double-faced wall, typical of the sort of walls we've got. You think this whole thing is one massive wall? I do, yes. You wouldn't just get that up for a, on a mountain path, you would you? Would you? You see how it encloses this big area of oh, stones so and clefts and so on. It, feel, it feels mystical in a way, doesn't it? Half of me say, oh, wow, this is amazing, all these Copper Age yeah. people dressed in robes on their way to the sanctuary. <laughs> and the other half of me is saying, it could be a load of tosh, these could just yeah. be stones to get I, out I, of the I've ground. got the same feelings myself, unfortunately, but archaeologically, you have to establish there's a sanctuary over there, it's an important site, you've got settlement over there. They've and got to get from one to the right. other, but will Mick buy this? I, I don't think Mick would buy it in a thousand years, but... It's archae there's archaeological evidence here, we've seen the walls, and it'd be nice over a period of time. I don't think we can do anything in we three days. We can't prove it this no. weekend. But Bill, over a longer period of time, if we point him at this, he'd be able to answer some of the questions we can't. Is there any more? There's, the path continues for quite a way. It just continues round the cliffs. But as the day nears its end, the chances of finding a beaker dwelling, let alone a settlement at the maze, seem to be receding. The test pits at the top of the site have hit bedrock with no finds. Those nearest the Clapeir haven't hit anything. And no one will put a date on the wall still being uncovered in the Clapeir trench. Ominously, they've had no Copper Age finds from here. In the incident room, Sue's busy reconstructing our few beaker sherds, watched by two-week-old daughter Millie, while Millie's dad struggles with the 3D map. It seems to be taking forever to get the GPS data. And just outside, Phil's had to recruit two passing Americans to help him build a kiln for the copper smelting. It all seems to be a bit uphill. Have you got it? So it's about time for some good news. And at the sanctuary, geophysics look as if they might have some. What are we looking at? Okay, well, 
Basically, we've looked at this flat area here. Right. It's, a, it's only a small area from our point of view, about 10 metres, 7 metres. We've gone in with MagSus and right. resistance. So we're looking for magnetic contrasts yeah. um, between any walls, boulders and the soil, and then for any electrical contrasts, right. if there's any wall lines and right. so on. Uh, and we've actually got some have you, have positive results. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Well, what yeah. have we got then? We've got a, what looks like a, a linear coming through here. What, right. through, through yeah. towards where these boulders are? Yeah, right over there, yeah. So would that be buildings, occupation? Well, it looks as though there might be a wall line yeah. Yeah. through right. here with the build-up of soil on either yeah. side. Yeah. OK, well, that's... If you well, I mean, make, that, if you... that's encouraging that's in its own right, right, isn't it? Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> on that positive note, Time Team gather a few miles down the road at Bill and his wife Jackie's house to make the final excavation of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get to the bottom of this fantastic Mayokin paella? And tomorrow, can we get to the bottom of our two remaining sites? Can we find out what the beakers lived in at the maze and what they worshipped in at the sanctuary? Well, here's to a great bunch, huh? Eh? Cheers, 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 cheers. Join us after the break. If this wall was part of a beaker building, these diggers should be coming up with lots of Copper Age finds. Well, early this morning, they finally got some, so it still could be. But the bulk of pottery has been Roman and Iron Age. That's the classical stuff. So this is all Roman? Yes, all of that sort of date, and here. Huge pieces coming out. But um, then we've also got... Oh, that's a hammer stone there. This is um, Bronze Age, Iron Age stuff in here. You can see the difference. Some quite nice pieces coming out there. And we've just found a few bits of Copper Age stuff, which would have been contemporary with the beakers, just starting to come out. But if you've got pottery from three different periods, can you tell what age that wall was? Well, not at the moment, because it's all mixed up together. What we need is pottery in separate layers. Yeah. In this trench, we've got something really exciting where we are starting to get distinct layers. We put in these test pits, yes. and in this one, hello, Pep, we decided to, because they're quite hard work digging these yeah. test pits, they're, it's very dry, hard soil, we decided to just take down one side of it Look to see that. how deep it went, and we found that, and that is Bronze Age. There are two Roman layers on top of this, then we've got the Bronze Age layer and we're still not down onto the red soil, which is the Copper Age. So there. we could get the Copper Age underneath that. That's what so we're hoping. So we would be able to date it really clearly. That's exactly what we're hoping. You ready to take that out, yeah. Pep? I think so. That's one piece. Oh, it's, it's, oh, it's yeah, crumbling, it's isn't it? That's where I hit it with, with the pick. <laughs> so that's, that's sure? why it's crumbling. And that's the last place. Oh, it's lovely. It's so nice. How much way it went now? Yeah. Is that right? That's right. Brilliant. While Pep digs deeper in search of a Copper Age layer, outside the incident room, Phil and Bill are pulverising copper ore. Well, that looks... Yeah, it's, uh, it, the smaller pieces you can get, we don't want to make it a powder, because then it'll disappear in the kiln. Right. But, if it won't break, don't worry about it. I mean, is this good quality ore, do you reckon? Um, I think it's very poor quality ore, to be honest with you, but it's enough. You can see here, there's a nice piece of... Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah, that is... That's nice and rich. That is, isn't it? But then comes the part Phil's been dreading. To stop the crushed ore disintegrating in the furnace, he's got to bind it in horse dung. That yep. is pretty disgusting. Uh, well, you can have that job. And it, it, <laughs> you can <laughs> make, your, make your sausages. I'll tell you and, what that is. Uh, that I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> would, would you like to spit on it a little no, bit? No, no. Horse dung sausages. Well, I've done some things in my time, but yep. this is going to be one of the best. But that's the easy bit. To smelt the ore, Phil's got to get the kiln to over a thousand degrees centigrade, and that's going to mean lots of bellowing. A 
at the sanctuary, Bill's decided the wall geophysics found yesterday is part of a modern terrace. He thinks the Copper Age sanctuary is more likely to be closer to the Iron Age building, so that's where mixed digging. There's even less topsoil here than at the maze, so we'll soon find out if he's right. Especially as Phil's turned up to supply extra digging power. Leaving Steve, who'd nipped out for a break from his map, temporarily stranded on the bellows. John, Paul, just the people. Listen, I've really got to get back in the chapel and get on some 3D landmasses. Come on, they need the experts, that's why we've been oh, called yeah. in. Do you know what you're doing? Uh, no, I don't. You just make sure you open it at the bottom and pull up, just so it doesn't suck any air back in. And the flame back in. Do you want me Look, to...? Can, yeah. yeah. All right. Good luck, you're going to enjoy this. I'll do the work, you do the talk again. All right, see you later. Hello, Bill, it's John at this end. Can you tell us what we're meant to be doing with the bellows over? What sort of a fire look like? I've only just arrived, I'll have a look. Hello, Bill, it's glowing red at the bottom, but... There's only half full of charcoal, do we need any more? Uh, oh, dear, mate. You've got all of the ore in already? I don't know about the ore, Bill. All I've been told is to add charcoal. It's not a question of charcoal, now it's a question of air and muscle power. <laughs> air and muscle power. <laughs> Shall we go? You're not going to get that fire up high enough if you don't put muscle into it, I can tell you that. So, bellow, fellow. By lunchtime, it's still not clear whether this is a beaker wall, and the test pits haven't reached a Copper Age layer either. But yesterday's surface finds mean there must be a beaker building here somewhere, so Pep and Carenza are ploughing on. Whether they find the building or not, we've got lots of information from the maze that'll help Bill in the future. Steve's compiling it onto the 3D map. Onto a plan showing the clapair and the rock outcrop, he's plotted Carenza's path and the test pits. Pep's pot came from this one. And the distribution map of Copper Age finds will help Bill decide where to dig when we've gone. I mean, look at that. That's, that's just bedrock all the way it's across. It's pretty well, isn't it? Uh, yeah. oh, I'm getting straight down onto it. Yeah. But uh, like well, you say, it's 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 there's nothing sort of really solid there. Well, I reckon it's okay. We clearly haven't got it here. But, no. Uh, Bill, come and have a look at this, will you? In fact, none of the sanctuary trenches have hit structures. But at least Bill's has produced more evidence that there was a sanctuary here in the Copper Age. Show Phil that bit yeah, of early this pot. This is really great that's, stuff. Uh, this is what we're really looking for. Unfortunately, I put a pick in it. Oh well. <laughs> It's the best finds are always found like that. <laughs> <laughs> so what date's this, Bill? Ah, uh, this stuff is the real stuff. This is the this is the really old material. This could be uh, anywhere from 2,000, 2,500. Right. right. Uh, if I was finding this in caves, I'd say that it could even be older than that. Right. So it's the early stuff you've yeah. had off this site. It's domestic it? ware. It's not beaker yeah. ware, but it's yeah. domestic ware, right. and it is the oldest stuff that well, we've got. Well, can I actually have a look at it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I, get it, if I can get it together, I gave it a mighty whack here. There we go. Okay, you hold that, and I'll so. put the pieces on for you. That way, right there. There well, it is. Right that there. That's ah, it. Right. Right. So that's yeah. that way. Ah, right. So that's you've got. No, not that way. Not that way. That way, right? Straight up like that. Any of the wiser? Nor am I. Luckily, Sue has been able to reconstruct it. It's a domestic pot from early beaker times. It would have been about six inches high, with straight sides, a flat bottom, and lug holes, so it could be hung on a wall. Which suggests there must have been a Copper Age building here somewhere. The horse dung sausages are in the furnace. But the heat's still too low, and John's running out of energy on the bellows. It's time to cheat. John, here comes the fan. Isn't that the way you spun it? That's what you can do, just connect. Just open it up for me, John. Do you want to fire it up just first, just though? Just open it up. John, go on. Beaker copper smelters will be turning in their burial mounds. Be a just there, Hello, Mick. 
Mick's last chance to prove there was a Copper Age sanctuary here lies with our astroarchaeologist, and he thinks he's cracked it. Now, we look up this valley, yep. and we've got uh, the hill on the left, the hill on the right. Right, yeah. And we're living in 2000 BC. Yeah. 2000 BC? 2000 BC. That's the date you've come up with? Well, for example. For example. For yeah. example. Right. And as night falls, yeah. from the left-hand hill, yeah. there emerges the sensational appearance of the Southern Cross. And yeah. it would look just beautiful. It looks beautiful anywhere now, yeah, yeah. to anybody. I've never, I've never seen it. But to see it framed in those yeah. till hills would be absolutely fabulous. Yeah. Then you have to remember that because of the tilt of the Earth's axis, yeah. year by year, century yeah. by century, this Southern Cross would get lower and lower right. until the bottom star of the cross was no longer visible. Right. And that was about the year... 1700, 1700 BC. years before Christ. Yeah, yeah, BC, yeah. And so it would seem to me that um, at that date something really serious happened here. Right. Because uh, what I imagine them as looking towards and possibly even worshipping if they identified right. the constellation with a god like suddenly they did in Egypt, in front of their suddenly eyes. suddenly disappearing in front of yeah, their yeah. eyes. Yeah. Astonishingly, this theory is supported by the previous findings of Bill's radiocarbon dating expert. I have dates here from 2000 to 200 BC yeah. until 1740, yeah. and then I have a gap of 400 years. So the site looks abandoned for 400 years, until right. another culture comes in much later, around 1300 BC. So it looks like the sighting stone is the only remaining part of the Beaker Sanctuary. The rest of the building would have been abandoned or even destroyed when the object of the beaker's worship fell from the sky in 1700 BC. The rubble may have been reused to build the sanctuary we see today. It's five o'clock on day three and the weather's closing in. The kiln now looks fantastic. which is more than can be said for Phil. Well, what can I say? Why? <laughs> this is a compulsory dress. <laughs> this wasn't in the contract. It was needs must when it rained, that's you all. You want to watch it don't melt. I, I know, I know. This is a... Um... It's going brilliantly, though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, look the... at that. Now, that... We'd have never got that with the bellows. Whoa! Whoa. It's still just red, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I mean, that is going to be really hot down oh. in there. Oh, that's going really oh, orange. That's as hot as we've had it, yeah, isn't it? That's, that's, that that's is yellow, hot. isn't it? That is hot. But will it be hot enough to get copper? By six o'clock, the test pits have hit the bottom without hitting the Beaker building. And nor is it the wall in the Clapea Trench, which Pep now thinks is part of an Iron Age building. Nevertheless, it's been a profitable weekend here, because not only have we found enough Copper Age pottery on the site to be sure that there was a Beaker building here, we've also narrowed the area it could be in. And of course the stretch of wall means Bill may be able to add an Iron Age settlement to his collection. What are you doing with the Copper Age generator then? Oh, oh. That's it. <laughs> We're done. Does it matter if stuff falls in? No, it ain't, sir. Do I have pull it back anymore? Or? Yeah, we'll have, yeah, we'll have the whole shooting match off, the whole superstructure, as you might call it. Gotcha. What do you reckon the chances are of us getting some copper out of here, Phil? Oh. God knows, Tony. I mean, I'll tell you what, it won't be for the same Katroyan. I mean, we've put a lot of work into this, and I mean, we've had we've had doubts, and then I suppose we've had bits where it's gone. You know, you think, yeah, yeah, we're really going to do it. And then, yeah, I thought there was going to be punch-ups earlier on. Well, you know, you know, I'm sort of like betwixt and between. One half of me says, yeah, it's really going to work, and the other half of me says, mm, well, maybe, maybe it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> This is the maze and this is the sanctuary here. Just it's seven o'clock and the 3D map is finally ready for the official viewing. This will be the first time Bill seen in detail how the three sites relate to each other. I hope I'm gonna, this I hope I'm going to get it. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, oh listen, that's, the, that's going down to the sea. At the top, Bill's beaker settlement at Sonalesa. The huge perimeter would have enclosed these communal houses, which would have been directly connected to a water supply by a stone channel carved into the rock. 800 yards along the coast, our main site, the Maze, home probably to a small group of beaker folk and certainly to an Iron Age community. Its inhabitants might have walked through the gap in the rock outcrop, along Stuart's clifftop path, to worship at the Iron Age sanctuary building at Son Mass. More than a thousand years earlier in the Copper Age, the sanctuary would have looked like this a bit like the British beaker sanctuaries at Stonehenge and Avebury. Here, the beaker inhabitants of Sonaleza and the Maze would have gazed on the Southern Cross until it fell from the sky in 1700 BC. Bill, what do you reckon on Phil's first attempt at copper smelting? I think it was a success. Never doubted it for a minute. <laughs> you call this a success? I would call that a success. Because? Because that is copper, my friend. That is copper. So we got there by the skin of our teeth. You got that through the skin of your teeth. You got there. Well, that just about sums up this weekend, I think. We just about managed it logistically. I think we just about got there on the dates. And we got this little bit of copper. But given that this is the first step between the Stone Age and late 20th century computers, I don't think we did too bad. I think we could say that Phil did marginally better than most Stone Age men. <laughs> <laughs>